I messed it up. Love with the leaves. Is that better? Is he gonna be here? He's here right now. Jesus is alive in me. And not just in me and nobody else. But he is called many in grace and mercy. Undeserving, but joyful to be in his presence. And that's why I'm here talking to you at all. That's why, I don't even, 392, I think this one is. That's why all 392 of these uh, have been recorded and put up. Because Jesus seized hold of my heart. Stirred me with his example in just the merest uh, 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 trappings of my intellect. But he seized my heart and reshaped my soul with the hand of God that is is his hand. And in some ways I can't even explain it other than to live in joy and grace, which leads me into John 4.14. I love the book of John, by the way. If you ever just want to get into the Gospels, find out a little bit about God, I find John to be an excellent starting point. But whoever, sorry, John 4.14 but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Amen. And, Selah. And, uh, the thing I love about the water metaphor is that we know, and they probably knew in, for a very long time, but... You know, we know exactly how long the average human being can live without food, which is really quite a long time. I didn't look it up. I can't tell you, but go ahead and just click in that corner of your internet box and uh, ask the world. But we know that the time that you can live without water is extremely short. Something like a week or three days or something ridiculous. I don't even know. It's ridiculously short. Um, and we've all been thirsty. I don't know if many of us watching this have been thirsty in the fashion that those without water um, are thirsty. I admit I have never been uh, that type of thirsty. I'm in hella thirsty now, but not uh, not in that manner. But I think the manner of thirst, let us just find our most extreme version. <laughs> and we know how sweet that is. And you also know how fleeting that feeling is when you are desperately thirsty and you do drink. You're like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is wonderful. And I don't even like water. I'm like, this water is the sweetest thing. <laughs> and then you're like, mm, I'm somewhat sated. Mm, but I'm going to be thirsty again soon. And really, I can drink some more right now. Our souls are exactly the same way. We cannot live long. We don't live long anyway, but we cannot live long without the water of life. And we do all manners of things to, uh, to deny our deterioration, to deny the fact that we are starving, that we are dry, and our throats are cracked. Our soul's throats are cracked, and even the singing uh, we do comes through in a raspy, Tom Waitsy voice, but not as cool. Um, we are in a desert. Without Jehovah, without the sweet covenant we were created for, without the work of Christ in my soul, I am parched. I am parched, and all that I do, ultimately, is in vain. But that water... The water of God, the wellspring of love and life, all creation and beauty and joy and cleansing waters 
of God, when you sip them, when you but sip them, when you stoop to sip them from the stream, ever-flowing stream at your feet that comes down from above, it is that same delight. Oh my goodness, this is the best. But it does not cease. And it indeed becomes a wellspring within you. It is the gift that keeps on giving. And even as it is a gift, it is meant to be a gift that is shared. Hence I am sharing it now. And hence we all must share it. And we must share it not only the way I'm speaking about it specifically, we must share it in the graceful way that we move in this world. Where we cling to the righteousness of God's law and we cl cling to the mercy and grace of God's mercy and grace with us. Let us be good and holy servants, never dry of mouth, never dry of mouth in our soul, no cotton mouth in my soul. <laughs> Amen. Selah.